What's it like to miss curfew? At home, it may not matter, but what about in a hostel in a foreign country? Check out this episode on Italy. You're listening to Travel FOMO, a podcast for people self-diagnosed with Wanderlust. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm Jamin Houghton, and this is my wife, Hillary. Hey, guys. And you're listening to the Travel FOMO podcast. If you're a fan of podcasts and you already know that the algorithms that put things in people's feeds are churning out there, mm-hmm. and if you want to help us out, you can rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen, and that will give us a big boost and help grow the Travel FOMO crew. That's right. And today you guys are going to hear about how charming Italy can be, even on a shoestring budget. (laughs) It's all part of The Secret Season, featuring an interview series with my sister, Jessica Giles. And we are reliving our travel adventures as college students backpacking across nine European countries. Now, you guys hit up all, like, you did the the big hits in Italy, right? Like, you went to Venice and Rome and Florence, Pisa... Uh, Cinque Terre, yeah. like all those, right? Yeah, we, oh gosh, yeah, we did the major spots, yeah. I think that uh, that we're ready to just rock and roll with the interview, so if you're good, let's get into it. Let's go. Hey guys, I am back here with my sister, Jessica Giles, and we are reliving the month we spent in Europe um, in 2005 as young college students backpacking. It was amazing. Um, We're about to tell you about one of our favorite countries, one of my favorite countries, Italy. I just have the best memories. I also, I really like warm weather. So I think that has something to do with it is I just like the <laughs> summer vibe. Um, but um, yeah, we'll kind of run you through. We, we arrived in Venice was our first um, taste of Italy. And it was actually a Sunday morning though. Jess, do you remember us like showing up in Venice? Yeah. A lot of stuff was closed. <laughs> was, Everyone was in church. <laughs> yeah. And it was like 7 a.m. too. It was early. Oh, yeah, it was. I think we had an overnight train and it was like really dead. It was like, honestly, it wasn't as magical as I expected. Mm -hmm. I had really high expectations, but the timing probably had a lot to do with it. But it it was just, it was a little stinky too. Like the water was dirty and there were dogs peeing everywhere. And I remember. Not what you imagine of like romantic Italy. (laughs) Exactly. And it'd been a rough train ride. And because Italian trains are different people, they are not the same (laughs) as all these other countries might have different types of trains, but Italian trains aren't necessarily, there's not necessarily air conditioning, you know, it's just, but yeah, we like thought we were going to go to church in Venice um, and got all dressed up for church. I say all dressed up. We changed into skirts (laughs) and we were wearing flip flops and our feet were dirty. And I think we all, I think we just kind of decided people were so dressed up and so respectful as they walked into church. We were, I think we were kind of like, e kind of got shamed out of it. Yeah. A little bit. I think so too. But, um, uh, yeah. yeah, but then the day shifted and it turned into like, there was a huge celebration happening that day, like a festival on the Grand Canal. And there were huge gondolas with like balloons. And I think. My, okay, according to my journal, it was like a festival and a fundraiser for a local hospital. Um, and there was oh. a thing in the water. It was just really cool. Do you remember That's that? That's cool. I never, I mean, I remember it, but I never knew what it was for. So that's kind of cool. I like that you yeah. like researched it a little bit. Um, yeah, because I always wondered like, okay, well, we saw this cool thing. And, and that's what's funny about it is that it was like, because there's so much water, like, there's water everywhere. Like you don't have a parade on the streets. <laughs> you have a parade on the canal, you know? Yeah. And, um, it was really encouraging because when we, when we saw it start to pick up, cause we were like, Oh man, like we came on a Sunday, nothing's going to be, there's not going to be anything going on. And then it was like, Oh yay. We didn't miss all of what Venice had to offer, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I would definitely stay longer though. I would spend a night in Venice mm-hmm. at least. Oh Yeah. For sure. I, I don't know if I thought of that at the time, but I remember looking back, I mean, maybe even in the same trip and mm-hmm. being like, what? Like, we didn't even stay for like nighttime, like the gondola I rides know. with the lights and all this. Like we, oh my gosh. 
can't believe we were only there during the day. I know that was like it was just it just worked out that way. It wasn't it wasn't great timing. I would totally go back and um yeah. and stay there at night and just see what it had to offer. It was expensive though, and I think that might have been why we didn't stay all night. It's because it was very touristy. But um, and we were hitting up a lot of spots in Italy. So it's yes. like, yeah, like for the, you know, the number of days we're actually like giving just to Italy alone. It's like, oh, okay, well, like we're hitting up some yeah, spots. Yeah. Well, in Italy is where there's so much tourism that for me, I really started noticing kind of like in Paris where it's just heavy with tourism. And um, like we arrived in that same day, we ended up in Florence and spent several days in Florence area. And I'm so glad we did. It was, I love that area, but there are tons of tourists in Florence. And um, yeah, I remember when we first got there, like we were still in our skirts and our flip flops um, from church, (laughs) from like the attempt (laughs) to go to church. And somebody, a a young couple took our photo and, in the streets on these like cobblestone streets, these, these old streets. And, um, it totally captured the whole vibe of our trip, us with our backpacks Mm -hmm. and, um, these, this old, old street. Um, that was really cool. And, um, that couple had just been robbed in the internet uh, at at an internet cafe too. I don't know if you remember that, but, um, I I didn't remember it until you said it, but I'm like, Oh my gosh. And, that's just so cool that they were nice enough to like, I know, offer to take our picture after, I mean, you know, like talk about an opportunity to not trust a single soul. Oh, <laughs> like, right? yeah. They had just been robbed and they were so nice to like, let me show you some kindness as a human. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then, um, we got Italian ice cream, gelato. Oh my goodness. You might hear us talk a lot about gelato the course of our, <laughs> our time in Italy, but, um, and I think we just stayed a little while and then we made our way on to Castel Fiorentino for the rest of that day because it was a ways outside. It was where we were staying in our hostel and we didn't realize how far away it was from Florence. So we kept thinking like, I think when we were planning it, we thought we'd just go back and forth every day and it was kind of in the suburbs and it was a little further away. It was but not. <laughs> yeah, it was not. But it was still worth cool. it. Yeah, but it was so cool. It was just to go to this tiny little village and stay there, like was totally different vibe. And, um, I think it was also a ton cheaper probably, but it was like 40 kilometers (laughs) outside of Florence, which Mm -hmm. is crazy. But, um, yeah. What do you remember about that hostel? It was like right beside a soccer field, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. We could watch soccer out the window, which was kind of cool. Um, I do remember, I don't know, maybe you were just speculating, but I do remember you say something about getting, um, like bites in bed. Like, I think I got, oh, yes. I think you were on the, cause you were always on the bottom bunk. So I was always on the top. You were always on the bottom, which I like the top. I think yeah. you like the bottom. I don't uh-huh. know. But I hope you did. But, yeah. um, and I remember I mean, it was just super clean. What was so crazy is it was a super clean hostel. It was nice. The bathrooms were huge and just like, it was, I felt like it was nice, like, you know, tidy, yeah. modern. And, um, but you said that you're like, I think I got bed bugs. And like, it didn't even like, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it didn't like register to me. Like, oh, that's not cool. That's a problem. <laughs> like, we can even take those with us. Crap. Mm, you know, right? like. I didn't know that at the like, time either. And like, I didn't I, either. I pretty much had bed bugs for the rest of the trip. I'm pretty sure. Oh, bless your heart. Oh man. Cause I, I remember coming home and still having spots and stuff and thinking like, gosh, like that's crazy. Oh. But, yeah. That was crazy. Oh, but oh man, that was still such a cool, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. It was such a cool place to be. And like, we happened to be there during the weekend and there was a festival just ending and cause that was a Sunday. Yeah. And so we got to see these crafts and jewelry and art for sale and we got to buy stuff and meet all these local artists and yeah that was really cool that was really cool and then eating at um that little pizzeria where we like I remember being like the pizza was only four euros we each got our own pizza it was amazing (laughs) (laughs) 
and like a bottle of wine and that was um that was a lot of fun that was fun yeah Just, that's a good place man like I forgot how much I enjoyed that place yeah. I think I would go there um like even though it is so far out of out of the way from Florence it's such a different it is that small town Italy like experience that you're not getting from Florence or you're not going to get from Venice because they are yeah. so touristy definitely yeah. like for sure I will say I um note to travelers um that the hostel it was super quiet there's hardly anyone there which I loved that it felt like like we had a room that regularly normally would have been shared with other people but it, nobody was mm -hmm. there so it was just us and we got to use the bathroom ourselves and it was super clean except for bed bugs and um <laughs> but they did require us to leave every day from 10 a.m to 5 p.m and so, i forgot that part really i know oh, right crazy it's kind of crazy they had a lot of rules i remember because i remember their curfews and and stuff like that yeah. and i was like that's kind of a hassle yeah. when you're trying to go to florence um to see other stuff but um yeah because that was we were afraid that we were not going to make it back in time for the curfew and they wouldn't like we'd already got got to our hostel in yeah salzburg too late and we couldn't get in so we knew yeah. that could happen again Mm -hmm. And here we're dry, you know, on an hour train, maybe 30 minutes, yeah. 40, 40 minutes, whatever. Um, so was, was that the day that we had to like contact mom and dad? Like, Hey, we're, we need someone to contact the hostel and let them know we're coming. Yeah. Yeah. We'd like spent the day in Florence. So this would have been like our second day to see Florence. And we hung out at an internet cafe. We um, met two Italian guys and almost immediately and like had coffee and spent the a large part of the day walking around trying to communicate with them which is really funny to look back on that we invested so much time that they invested time in us too um but also a little iffy like i look back and i'm like i think this one guy i looked back at my journal and this one guy was on the phone all the time and i was worried that he was like making plans for somebody to come like meet up and rob us or something like i was but i'd also just heard about that couple that gotten robbed and yeah it's very touristy um this other guy so there's that guy mario that was talking on the phone and this other guy elio and he like really liked you and he was trying to walk away with you and i was like no just stay i was like stay <laughs> like i just and everybody looked at me like you're crazy and i was like he he uh i mean like please don't go <laughs> but i mean we really did not know these guys they were nice but still yeah. it's like yeah you know, you don't yeah. know these guys. I just don't know these guys. Yeah. And so that was the night the guys were wanting us to go out dancing with them and mom and dad, you will be proud when you listen to this podcast, you'll be proud to know that we did not go dancing with them that night. Um, they offered to drive us back to Castle Fiorentina and we're like, no, that's okay. We better not. But, um, but we did try to make our way back that night and it was a mess. That was the night, like you were saying, where, it was an adventure. We switched some train. We had to switch trains, but we made a mistake. And then we had to go back and try to get back to a certain train station. And there was a curfew involved with our hostel. And do you remember like those old men sitting outside that train station that were like yeah. trying to help us? Yeah. I was so grateful. <laughs> like, even though like just, I don't even know that they were able to help in any way. I don't think they were, but just the, the friendliness that they were like, Oh, well, you know, I know they're, they're, you know, their desire to like, we'll find a way we'll, we'll make it work. Oh, <laughs> like, and it's you'll like, be okay. You yeah. can't. Yeah. Just reassuring that like, Oh, you know, you'll figure out. Yeah. Find. Well, and they were like offering to drive us, which is so generous. And, and this one guy was like vouching for another guy. And he said, it's okay. Like, um, he, me amico, like he's, he's my friend. And I was like, but he's not me amico. <laughs> Your friend, not my friend. Like I can't just cause you vouch for him. I don't know you either. And like, yeah, no offense, but your word doesn't mean much. Cause we just met. <laughs> yeah. It was like, Oh, it was, um, 
but I definitely felt like if we had to, we could have hopped in a car with him. Um, but we called dad and mom and it was like, I don't think it was the middle of the night for them though. I think it was just it would have been early. It would oh, have been early, early in the morning. They're like, well, no, wait, seven hours. We were ahead of them. We were ahead of them. Okay. Sure. So it would have been in the daytime for them. Okay. Yeah. But like, and then mom's cell phone died and we're yeah. like, we're scared. We're out. It's night and we're out in the middle of somewhere that we don't even know where we're at. And we need to get back to a certain city and we're, cause we were, we needed the phone number for the hostel. That's why we called mom and dad because That's they it, had yeah. all those phone numbers it's for us. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and we normally have those numbers too, but they were in the in backpack at the hostel. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And then we ended up getting on a bus, I think, in order to get back I to the hostel. So. Mm-hmm. But, um, and then we didn't know if we'd get inside, but there was a buzzer and we were able to get in. That was like crazy. Yeah. I don't know why we were, I guess being, not being able to get into that other hostel in Salzburg probably panicked us a little. Cause I'm like, gosh, yeah. we were already there the night before. We literally had our stuff there. We'd already why checked in. so worried yeah. that they wouldn't let us in, but I don't know if they kick you out during the day. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just decide not to let you back in. <laughs> yeah. They had a lot of rules. That is wild that they, like, please be gone. Yeah. For at least seven hours. Ten yeah. to five. But then we made our way to Rome the next day, and mm-hmm. I noted to myself that that was a really hot train ride. <laughs> I said that a lot in Italy, um, <laughs> which is not really a problem if you're if you are prepared. I think it just takes a little mental yeah. preparation that like, okay, it's going to be hot. I'm going to dress appropriately, and you know. But and um, we had been on some train rides that were really comfortable sleepers. Yeah air condition, like very yes. like, Oh, a relief to be on, you know, if you're going to be traveling, it's like, Oh, okay. Some of these were comfortable enough to actually be on or at least comfort was taken into consideration. Right. <laughs> and yeah, not necessarily on, on all, all train rides. Yeah, for sure. And then I don't know if you remember that hostel in Rome when we arrived there, but it was like the Stargate hostel it had, it was really close to the train station, which I keep saying that like it's a good thing. We find out later it wasn't a good thing. But <laughs> Depends on which city you're in. <laughs> probably, yeah. And, um, but it was like, really felt, um, it definitely felt like another country. That like elevator was like a cage. And it was like, it was like hexagon shaped too. It wasn't even, or maybe it wasn't the stairwell I think was hexagon shaped or something. It was just interesting and different. And then the elevator went right up through the middle of that stairwell and um, it was hot. I was glad there was an elevator. I remember thinking, Hmm. but But it was like, I, I just remember it being like, um, like, I hope this elevator doesn't fall. Like, like I, I didn't remember, I I remember feeling like, uh, I mean, it's not the nicest place we stayed by any means. And so like the elevator itself, maybe it was just because I wasn't used to those kind of elevators, but you know, just like, I hope this is like maintained well, like I hope this is sturdy and not going to like, oops, sorry, this really important pole has rusted now. (laughs) It's, it was really iffy. It was, it It was was every time you got in. Yeah. It was like, should I take the stairs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's funny. And then, so yeah, we were in Rome. We went to the Colosseum. We got gelato. It's obligatory. You got to keep doing that everywhere you go. <laughs> and we ended up, that was our first night. We ate pizza in this, outside this little pizzeria near a train, near the train station, which is where we're going with the story. And it was such a great vibe. I remember thinking like, this is amazing. I'm going to remember this moment. And I literally have a snapshot in my head of, of sitting there outside that, um, um, on the patio of this little pizzeria. And, um, it was so charming. And we were like, we're in Rome. This is amazing. And then went on to do a pub crawl, which was so fun. 
and we'd been, I forgot that's what that's called. Yeah. And we'd been, it had been recommended a pub crawl would be probably really good in like England or, um, Munich, maybe, <laughs> even, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah. So that started a really long night of Hillary throwing up in the streets of Rome, which Aww. is not what you think people. It sounds like I got really drunk on a pub crawl, but in all honesty, That's I really got sick well before I had been drinking enough to, yeah. to have been drunk at all. And like the, we, we think it was the pizza and we had been advised after that. Somebody was like, why is she so sick? And, um, we were talking about where we ate and they were like, yeah, never eat close to the train station here. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> like, well, crap. <laughs> good to know yeah, now. And they were Oops. like, okay, note to self. And, um, yeah. and then, oh, oh my gosh. You do I remember, remember, I remember pulling out what? a maxi pad. A clean my <laughs> head and wiping yeah. my face with it because I was so sick and it was wow. coming out of my nose. It was really, really bad. And we're outside and it's night and nothing's like, we're like, well, we need a napkin or something. And yeah. what do we have? I have a pad. I know. <laughs> oh, that was like, but also one of my favorite stories. <laughs> it's yeah, crazy, it but it's one of my favorite fun. stories. The, do you remember like eating earlier that day by the train station? Um, we got the pizza. You, I think you got like a meat variety, kind of like meat lovers or something like that. And then I got what I thought was pepperoni, like, you know, okay, salami on top. I'm, I don't know what I was thinking, but well, in Castel Fiorentino, it was like pepperoni pizza. It looked like yeah. pepperonis, looked like pepperoni. But um, this one was like thin slices of like salami. It was different meat than what I was anticipating. And I didn't, I was like, oh, I don't think I want this. I'm, I'm just going to take it off. And you're like, oh, well, here, I'll, I'll take it. So not only did you have the meat on your pizza, you had the meat from my pizza. Oh. And like, so who knows which of those meats probably made you sick. Yeah. And it was just like, oh man, like talk about a double whammy. Like there were a lot sucks. of options on my pizza. There was a lot of possibilities as to what made me sick. <laughs> a lot was, of possibilities. It was, it was, there was a lot of oh, things. I do remember like noting like this looks really not what I had in mind. <laughs> <It was concerning. laughs> but, but you're so I brave. You ate it anyway. Oh, you're so brave. Like I was crazy, crazy back then. I remember a, a guy coming, coming up to me off of the street and he was like rubbing my belly and touching my head. And he was like, try because he could tell like I was really sick I, I remember you saying at some point you were like that's whenever I got worried because you were allowing a stranger near you and to touch you like that and that was not normal for you and yeah not yeah not on that trip at all for sure mm -hmm. and I didn't even really I wasn't even conscious of it like I was so sick I couldn't it, I didn't even care and he offered to take us to his car to get medicine and I was like no, I'm, I have enough clarity to know that doesn't sound like a good idea. For <laughs> That's me. not a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> but I think he was, God protected us so many times on that trip. I know. Oh. But Dang. I think he genuinely like had a good heart about him, you know, so. But um, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so hard to like, it's so hard to know, you know, I mean, like, and I think there were probably quite a few people that we came across on the trip that like, yep, yeah, like. This was a genuinely kind person, safe, yeah. like yeah. just an another human being in the world that has good intentions, mm -hmm. but it would be, yeah. well, it's crazy. Who yeah. knows? How do we get home that night? We took a taxi because I was so sick. We didn't want to walk. And the taxi driver even was like, you should go to the hospital. And I was like, no, no, no. I don't want to go to like the hospital. And he said, it's okay. It's free here. Everybody goes for free. Uh, and I was like, well, that's different. And that always stuck with me, like how interesting that even as a foreigner, I could just walk into the hospital and have somebody treat me, you know? Let's see, what did we do the next day? We toured Rome. We saw Vatican City for the first time, which, oh my gosh, that's a pretty big deal. But man, that was a tourist environment for sure. Um, yeah. It was pretty overwhelming for me. I remember th the thought that I felt like we were being herded like cattle. There was a lot of people. It was starting to feel like a long trip at that point. Like we, I, I wrote that I was like ready to kind of start 
I was ready to be home again. Like I was missing just the United States and like some form of um, normalcy, I guess maybe, but, um, but that's kind of the first hint of that is, is around this time. And which was what, two weeks into, yeah, about two weeks into our trip. And um, we bought a lot of souvenirs and clothes in the room and we mailed some things home. (laughs) So about a year ago, I went back to Italy and to the Vatican City, and I highly recommend if you, there are all kinds of private tours, and I mean, there was some money invested, but um, it was one of those tours that I was like, I want a good tour of the Vatican City this time, because the first time had really just been general admission, and, um, and it was amazing, and it was worth it. So... Um, I just say that to people who are considering going to Italy and seeing the Vatican city, like it's so interesting and it being its own country, there's just so much history there. And it's so unique. If you get a personal tour guide to like ask all these questions to, you can learn so much. And it's just, it was really, really fascinating and um, definitely worth the time. Yeah. And let's see, where did we go after Rome? We went to, oh gosh, the next day we went through Pisa and um, it's, it's like a photo op, right? Like it's kind of one of those like obligatory places you go to and you're like, there's no way I could not go. But then you go and you're like, okay, well, I've been there. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I would go back. There's not a lot there. I I don't feel like there's not a lot there other than like seeing the tower. You know what I mean? There's, um, so yeah, it's maybe a one and done. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Like maybe not on the do it again. I hate to like, sorry, Sorry, (laughs) but, but it is a fun, I think, I feel like we got some good pictures of like holding it up and being silly. Yeah. It is very touristy though. Lots of souvenirs, but they're not like, nice souvenirs it's kind of like Mm -hmm. they're definitely expecting tourists to come through there but there's not much to the little village it's just that that's the only thing you go to see is the leaning tower pizza so it's kind of crazy so we weren't there long and then we moved on (laughs) to cinque terre which oh my goodness one of my ultimate favorite places in the world now and i loved going to um the beach there. So, so Cinque Terre means five cities. And, um, so there are five Italian cities along the coast. So this would be, uh, the West coast, I believe. Yeah. Of Italy. And, um, oh man, it is beautiful. A lot of, if you see coastal pictures of Italy, you might very well be looking at one of those, those cities. Um, there are, so there are five little cities and you can take them by train, but you can also just hike along there. And I would definitely do that. Um, I just didn't know how cool it was going to be. I don't think we had heard of it until we started traveling and meeting up with people and learning from other backpackers. And that's when we were like, Oh, we should definitely hit that up. But we had no plans to stay overnight or anything like that. I would go probably a couple nights, honestly, and, um, and hike all of that. And, we hung out on the beach there, which was really fun. It was kind of a rough beach, a rocky beach, but it was still, it was fun. And uh, did you get stung by a jellyfish? Was there a jellyfish? On no, one? you did. I did? <laughs> that was oh. you. Yeah. Wow. I you got your foot. Right. I think, I think either you stepped on it or it was just right there on the ground. And I think, um, it didn't sting me. I thought it stung you. You're probably right because I didn't get in the water much and you did. And that's probably why is because after that, I wasn't that interested. I remember guys asking, did we do anything for you? Like after you got stung, like, oh, well, I guess you'll just wear off eventually. Did we do anything to like take, try to pee on my leg or something? I don't know. (laughs) I'm pretty sure we talked about the friends episode at some point. (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, but like I, re- I remember Italians like wanting to put um, lotion on you, sunscreen on you. <laughs> and I was like, on me? Yes. Oh, or or both of us or something. But like I just remember being like, no, no, you can't That's rub okay. oil or lotion over my little <laughs> sister's butt. Like absolutely uh, not. 
Oh man. And we got gelato again because that's what you do. And I do remember it was a it was a, a rough train ride, um, hot noisy train ride, and we made our way back north at that point. And uh, my wet swimsuit, I remember, was hanging from my backpack, and that was a long train ride. What was your favorite memory of Italy, Jess? At one point, didn't we go get an espresso? Did yeah, in, in um, Florence. In Florence, yeah. Um, oh, gosh. I remember when we went to that. We went to a restaurant with our backpacks in Florence before we had, like, because a lot of stuff you couldn't just go to, like, there were not public bathrooms. You couldn't just, like, I need to go to the bathroom. I need this. Like, you would have to go dine somewhere to go use their bathroom. It wasn't just, like, public. And um, didn't we, like, go into a restaurant at some point with our backpacks? And everyone, it's, like, a nice restaurant. <laughs> Probably. It's a big restaurant. And I don't remember if we ate or not. But, um my favorite memory of Italy. Oh, goodness. I, I mean, I liked it all. I think I probably enjoyed Florence the most. I really loved like those. Um, I think I loved like uh, along those bridges, like they would have like little buildings. Like, I don't even know how to explain it, but it just looked like apartment complexes all over like a bridge. It just, yeah. but it was like colorful and stuff. But, um, I think I enjoyed Florence, but it was really hot and I don't feel like we were prepared for it because our, all of our stuff, we either had our backpacks with us or like literally on our backs or all our backpacks were back in, um, Castel Fiorentino. Um, I think I enjoyed Florence maybe the most. Um, I wish I, uh, I wish I had, if I did it again, I would probably go, um, stay longer in Castel Fiorentino. I would love to have actually gone and watched a soccer match, like an Italian, oh like these kids, these Italian kids, they know how to play soccer. Yeah. They are playing soccer. That would have been fun. Um, I say that now guys, because I have three boys and they play soccer and my husband is a soccer oh. fanatic. So, yeah. um, back then soccer was not such a big thing to me, but now I have an appreciation for the game. Yeah. And, um, but I think I would just, I would probably want to st spend more time in like the outskirts of Italy, like Castel Fiorentino, or maybe even like a smaller village. I feel like that was, mm -hmm. I don't know, that was a decent size or it wasn't real big, but wasn't like tiny either. Um, but just enjoyed more of like the outskirts, the non-touristy parts of Italy. Yeah. And, um, but then I would also... I'd still want to hit up the touristy spots again, but again, with like a better understanding and appreciation for the history of like what ha happened and like at particular buildings, like what happened at different things. Cause yeah. Rome has so much history yeah. and the Vatican. Um, I would do that tour that you mentioned for sure. Mm -hmm. That like that really in depth tour of the Vatican, that would be fascinating. Yeah. Um, and you um, know, one thing we didn't do in Rome was um, we didn't go see, um, where oh was it Paul? It might not have been Paul, but um one of the disciples um had was was held in jail there and you can go visit and see where where he was imprisoned and that's oh, really wow. pretty fascinating. But that at the time I, cool. I wasn't aware of it. Um yeah. yeah, there was like, oh man, Rome is just so full of history. Um mm -hmm. I think my favorite memories were like the Cinque Terre and then dinner in Castel Fiorentino, just that dinner alone was just like such a great time with the two of us. Like it was just a fun memory. And I do wish I'd spent more time at the Cinque Terre. If I were to go back, I would like, and do it all again. I would do that again and I would do it um, longer and really hike those trails. And I would go to a winery. We didn't go, we could have gone oh, to like, you know, yeah. an Italian, oh, you know, I would have wanted to go somewhere in Italy that made, um, did we get, did we eat any pasta while we were in Italy? I don't remember eating any Italian pasta and Maybe I love pasta. Maybe we only ate pizza. That's insane. I would have loved to have like gone to, what is it? A pasteria. I don't know what the word would be, mm -hmm. but, 
um, and watched them make it maybe. Oh, that would have been fun. Yeah. Or done like a, um, a cooking class where like they teach you how to make something. Yeah. Oh, that'd be amazing. I have a friend who's, who's done that before. Ashley Hill. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> Appreciate it. Man. Um, and I would have gone to Venice and stayed all night. Like, yes. Experience the nightlife. Let me just, even if I didn't stay the night, but experience the nightlife of Venice. Cause I feel like we did miss out on that. Yes. Yeah. I totally agree. Totally agree with that. Oh, good times though. Yeah. Italy is one of my favorites. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. There's Love a it. lot there. Lot there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So after listening to that and hearing all your stories, I think what everyone is really kind of burning to know is what's up with the bed bugs. <laughs> right. That's so funny. Um, I really did have bed bugs for like a while. I just like, you I just probably, spread them across I Europe. spread them across Europe to definitely to Spain. <laughs> I'm certain. Um, yeah, no, that's really funny. Um, yeah, there were bed bugs and I got them. It's literally as simple as that. And I, never saw anything. I never, it all looked, everything looked very clean. Um, but I just started to notice lots of spots on me and, um, and they did stick around until I got back to America. It's kind of crazy. Wow. So, uh, another burning question. (laughs) What does happen when you miss a curfew at a hostel? Yeah. Well, you know, I was looking into this more recently because my sister and I are kind of recapping a story from 15 years ago. But what about now? Like people would be just furious about getting locked out. Well, come to find out this did used to be more common. And there was actually um, things called lockouts and curfews. We happened to be staying at a hostel that had both. So we were locked Ooh, out. <laughs> yeah. The jackpot. Yeah. We were locked out during the day. And then we had a curfew at night. And it's really, um, it makes sense in retrospect because it was a small village. The people who owned the hostel, they had to, um, they had to leave at some point, right? Um, they didn't live there. And so they had to shut things down and they couldn't always be there and they had to lock up. And so that's um, how they uh, were able to offer a hostel in a tiny community where they also probably had other jobs. Um, It's actually not a major issue for people so much anymore. Um, So yeah, honestly, in a situation like that, you just hope that another guest hears you. It's kind of just like bang on the doors and see what happens. Like, Maybe someone will let you in, um, but but you will be locked out. You'll be locked out. Yeah, you'll be locked out. So <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So talk us through navigating the healthcare system um, in another country. Have you ever been to a hospital in a foreign country? No, I haven't. Have you? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, you know, it's um, we have had some friends though yes. that have yeah, had like to World War Two IVs. It's funny. <laughs> Because I we had a friend that had to go and get an IV, and I remember thinking like, oh, wow, that could be really bad. Because I knew someone who was on a trip and literally got an IV that was left over from World War II, and they got really Stop. sick because of it and had yeah. like continual like health problems like from then on. Oh my but, gosh! But uh, it was more of a like a third world country on like a mission trip, and not so much like. A tourist kind of thing, but that's uh, crazy. Yeah, it could be a scary deal. I mean, like, could you get like outdated like things that we thought diseases that you thought had already been like ex- like totally been curbed and already been taken care of, <laughs> and it's gone. like mm, no, come back from like, 1944, you get to experience this. You've got polio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I don't crazy. know. So what about what about church? Um, you talked about um, you guys considering going to church, but you didn't feel like that you were dressed appropriate, would you, would you take different clothes and go next time? Um, that's a good question. I would definitely go next time. Um, and yeah, I think I would just be, um, uh, I think, I think I would just be more prepared. Like I would just like have some different clothes. Um, I would also kind of, figure out what to do with my bag. Um, because you know, you've got yeah. these backpacks that are just, ours were falling apart almost by the time it was all over with. And we've got water bottles hanging from them and flip flops hanging from them and wet swimsuits. And, you know, we kind of look like walking homeless people. Um, <laughs> and so I think, 
I would have found a place for my bag, would have like, and would have taken it a little bit more seriously. Um, as it was, I think we were in like sp- little spaghetti strap tank tops and flip flops. And gotcha. having been to the Vatican, or at, um, at least at that point, we knew enough about some of these places that like you needed to like cover your shoulders. And so mm-hmm. I was like, ah, like it just wasn't, didn't feel like, I just didn't feel comfortable. So, I mean, here, here in the U S like churches can vary. Like there's, there's some churches that are still very, very formal, but then others that are really, really casual. So how should someone dress if they're going to go, if they're going to say, Hey, I'm in, I'm in Florence and I want to go to a mass. Like, um, wow, that's a great question. And I'm, I might not know all the right answers, but I would say, um, definitely, cover your shoulders. I think anywhere you go in Europe, if you bring like one, um, kind of throw or shawl that you can wrap around your shoulders at any time, you're gold, like you're going to be great. Um, so I would definitely recommend that. And, um, I do love a good shawl. A good shawl. (laughs) I can't think of the other word, (laughs) but, um, but I think, no, I think something like that would totally help. And then, um, um, just be aware of like being, very modest. Um, most of the churches in Europe, you're going to co- come across so many, so many Catholic churches. And just keep in mind, like, um, there is a lot of reverence there. They're not, um, they're not accommodating the modern day way of thinking. Um, it's all about the, the reverence of, and the history and, um, the years and years and years of, of, um, what they believe. So yeah. they're very much expecting you to um, have reverence for that as well. For sure. So just err on the side of being respectful. Yeah, I think so. Got it. So you guys went to Cinque Terre and you went to the beach, but you didn't stay there. Right. So you like, we just talked about how in order to go to church, you would, you would want to figure out something to do with your bags. So what about places like that where you're hitting up and you want to go to the beach but you've got all your stuff. Like, how do you manage that? Um, well, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> Not going to lie. Um, I would say look for lockers whenever you can. Um, I know you and I got to go to Milan, and that was a place where um, we wanted to go on some tours, but we had mm-hmm. already checked out of our Airbnb, so we had to find a locker where we could leave our stuff. And it worked out really well. Um, yeah, that was great. There are places like that everywhere. Um, and so look for those, um, but in smaller communities, that's harder to find, right? So um, you might have to you might have to take it with you. Yeah. Um, it, it is what it is, you know. Um, it, it, it does suck to bring a big old backpack to your, to the beach, you right. know. Um, but the thing you can think about is um, use it as a pillow. Lay there and just, you know, that was one of the things I always thought is that, like, if I was going to sleep in a train station or sleep on a bus or anything like that, I would, for the sake of my belongings... I would um, use my backpack as a pillow, and that actually worked out really well. Um, so you can always consider doing that. There you go, pillow backpack. There you go. <laughs> Free tip. <laughs> well, that's a wrap for this episode of the Travel FOMO podcast. Thanks again to Hillary's sister, Jessica Giles, for sharing her thoughts. Yeah, thanks, sister. I'm so curious if our listeners have been locked outside of their hostel um, or hotel or airbnb or anything like that um while they're traveling and um if you guys have those stories you should tell us about them because we would be really interested in in hearing those um you could even post photos from that trip and then tag us um or if you've already posted photos about that trip tag us in a comment or something so we can find that you'll find travel fomo on instagram facebook tiktok and youtube and that is where we're sharing some of our own photos and videos from our own trips and then you can learn more about jamin and i at travelfomopodcast.com yeah yep excited to see what uh what trips people have been on and uh learn more about that stuff yeah uh in next week's episode we'll get to travel with hillary and jessica as they cross the border from italy into switzerland and if you're enjoying their journey so far uh please rate review and subscribe to the travel fomo podcast from wherever you're listening that helps us get the word out about what we're doing absolutely okay you guys don't forget that life is short wander well